Here we are. Here we are. Here again. we are. So, this is the first time I've played basketball this close to doing a podcast. You mean? Oh, oh, oh wait, sorry. So, I play like this. Like you've you've never play gotten like it right the first time. I play. Nah. Pretty well, I need to keep it. Mike playing basketball. The... Mike playing basketball. I'm in my prime. Honestly, sign me. What are I the need... titles? Coach and player? Really, yeah, really but I don't. I'm, you're you're but like I'm shooting not... Damian Lillard level <laughs> from the field. The the problem is I don't keep the 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 grid up. So I don't see what is what. I just have to remember it because I don't Simply keep Simply guessing. The road like flipping a coin oh, would be better enough. at this point. Enough out of you. Enough out of you. The voicemails. Let CJ do it, I think. I think this should be full CJ control. I think you should you should give That's yourself... That's fine if CJ wants to do it. CJ? I, I can do I... it. Ah, uh, okay. I can do it. Anyway, I watched very little of the game because I was like, if, they, if I watch, they're going to lose. So I don't okay. even need to talk about it. We'll talk just about the playoff matchup. And the odds of me cramping up during this podcast be, are higher than ever to be honest with you i was terrified that we were going to spend 37 minutes no. on this game i watched very little of it who gives a fuck <laughs> okay good Speaking i like of, noah Clowney, but in, the, in games that noah Clowney plays 41 minutes yeah i don't think it's a real basketball game mm -hmm. also i didn't even have time to shower because the game ended so it was like a two-hour game that was the fastest game of all time Oh, a two-hour game, the Sixers, Sixers game. Sixers game. Oh, I was like, Sixers your game. I was like, that's no, fucking my long. Game, my, game, my game was also two hours. Oh, my God. But, uh, well, it's a pickup game, 9.30 to 11.30. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I'll watch the last like full quarter, basically. But I listened to uh, our friend Tom McGinnis in the car. And then I set up for the podcast. I yeah. saw you didn't miss plays. much. You didn't miss much. Guys, we're Maxie playoff good. here. Tobias looked good. <laughs> All right. Would have been great. Good. We have some. We have some. Oh, so you haven't been paying attention. We have some great Tobias information for you, actually. Oh yeah, I know nothing. Okay, I just saw it's that, yeah. it's in the rundown, uh, CJ. There's a, a tweet and a video we have see, to play. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Let me see. So. Let me see the rundown. But don't click it, Mike. I don't want you to click it. I don't want you to click the link for Tobias or oh, congrats, the guy in the Ricky. Congrats, head. Tobias. Okay, I won't look at that. Yeah, please don't okay. look at it. So we ready to rock. Yeah. Uh, all right. Guess we are. The Rice to Ricky Sanchez podcast is presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Sign up for DraftKings Sportsbook by using promo code RTRS and brought to you by L. Alpavorsky Jewelers, where Rice to Ricky Sanchez listeners go and get engaged. Big Barker Therapeutic Dog Beds. Get yours at bigbarker.com slash Ricky. Cornblow and Cornblow, the official law firm of the process. And Kinetic Skateboarding. Get 9.1% off your first order with promo code Dave Silver. On the show today, huge story. The Sixers sign Ricky Council, the fourth for four years, we will talk about that. Of course, the Sixers end the season with 47 wins and in the seventh position, as we are recording this pod, we actually do not know who they would play if they win that first playing game. So we will find that out. Also, a big congrats to Tobias Harris. We will talk about that as he sets, I guess, NBA, not a record, but you know, makes NBA history. And a guy in a Ricky hat wins season tickets to the 76ers. We'll talk about that as well. I did mention Kinetic, and I always mention Kinetic, and I mention stuff that you can get at Kinetic and not anywhere else. I saw these on their Twitter, at Kinetic Skate. The New Balance 440 V2 X VU Skate Shops. Now, I'm a New Balance guy anyway. I have a couple of uh, the New Balance basketball shoes, but these are pretty slick. They actually look like the 991s, just more sleek, I think, a little bit. They're pretty sick. You can get them at kineticskateboarding.com, and you can search all their awesome gear and sneakers that you can't find anywhere else. By the way, use promo code Dave Silver for 9.1% off your first order. And we always do a playoff shirt, and we are doing a playoff shirt again. Look at it. Oh, it's beautiful. It is in the style of legendary punk band. I won't say the band, so we don't get a cease and desist, but it is very, very cool. In fact, Mike, I heard from Twitter follower Allie. She was at a Sixers meet and greet yesterday. She showed it to Kelly Oubre, who asked for a link to purchase one. Wow. We're going to send one to Oubre anyway, but if you want to get this one and look at it, if you're not looking at it right, we'll put a link in the description, but you got to order by Monday at midnight because they are a pre-order so we can get them to you in time. The year, it says on there. So go to uh, writesrickysanchez.com. Thanks to Shy Vintage Sports, who is now our merch partner, who gets them printed for, them, for us and sells them for us and all that kind of crap. And final thing, if you're watching on YouTube, 
This is the time to be a YouTube person as we are live on YouTube and Twitch after every playoff game. If you're watching right now on YouTube, please subscribe and then turn on notifications. That way you will get the little alert that we are live. Once again, YouTube, make sure you subscribe. Do us a favor. Without any further ado, Amos and the chef. Welcome to the Rice Ricky Sanchez podcast. I'm Spike Eskin, along with a guy who has his priorities in order, didn't even watch the game today. That is one Mike Levin. Didn't need it. Yeah. I play the game. Yeah. If it's the ultimate game, I ask you. <laughs> why, why are they playing it again next year? That's so, right. what a fucking. I'm just already. I'm hot. I, first okay. of all, I okay. did play basketball instead of watching the Sixers. Uh, I have not showered because the Nets I laid like down. This, I don't play like that. <laughs> Sorry. I thought, you, I thought we already did that. Pretty well, but it's Mike in the playing basketball. Sure. Mike playing filter. Basketball. I'm in my prime. Honestly, I'm sign me. <laughs> thought I'd have enough time to shower and still watch some of the game. I did not. I am easily the sweatiest I've ever been for a podcast. Wow. It's a good thing we have the HD camera for <laughs> that. Yeah. Thank you, Siege. Shirt off. Uh, Do the pod with no shirt. Cool down. Let's oh go. Oh boy, this is a new shirt. I didn't play in it. I switched okay. before. Uh, but the pants, the pants are still the pants. So that's, okay, that's that's more of the danger area. Mm -hmm. um, what a ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous, embarrassing tank job from the Bucks. The Bucks. The Cavs. The Cavs. Yep. The Knicks are putting up a fight. It's actually a tie game with 35 yeah. seconds left. They're this trying is, to win. They're trying. It looks like the Knicks are trying. Maybe to just win. we should just pause and watch the rest of this game because if the Knicks win this game, Bulls ball. I have to, I have it at 29 seconds. Then uh, if the Knicks win this game, then the Knicks would be the two seed. Yep. If the Knicks lose this game, then the Bucks would be the two seed. Correct. Who do you want I, before this happens? If we are in fact the seven seed, we start as the seven like, seed, but we could end up as the eight seed. Yada yada. Fuck Doc Rivers. Fuck Dame Lillard. There you go. What an embarrassing Losers. organization now. Yep. Uh, Dame shot two of 13 from the field in the last game of the By the way, the they season. tried. They played all those. They only played eight guys. They played like seven guys. I don't know. I think they tried. I think they might just, they might just stink. Embarrassing. Embarrassing for Pat Bev. Yep. Uh, minus 20 in, the, in those minutes. If you think that you're like the guy to solve winning for everybody, inserting Pat Bev into the starting lineup was Doc's last minute move. That's going to do it. Hey, I'm Doc Rivers. Here, I'm going to surprise you with my my strategy. It's play a veteran more. Play the oldest guy on the team. Go figure. That's the strategy. Doc, genius. Embarrassing, and it's embarrassing for for Pat that they didn't do it. It's embarrassing for the entire organization that they that they lost uh, this game and are trying to avoid I, either whether they're trying to avoid the Sixers or the Heat or they are just backing into sucking. Um, then, then fuck him. And I was, I was so right about Dame, dude. I was so right about Dame. That what an embar like letting go of Drew makes their defense way worse. They're, they, he is obviously he's taken a step back this year. The step back is going to continue going forward. Gabe Vincent played like four <laughs> games this year, so I don't know yeah, that that's gonna hold. But, gonna bring up but certainly, but certainly better than. I mean, he was hurt the whole year, so whatever. But I still, I would still in in two and a half seasons take Gabe Vincent over Dame Lillard, absolutely. Absolutely. Do you want to so, give us play by play? Okay, so it's thirteen point nine seconds left. Oh wait, you're ahead of me. I'm watching on my phone, I'm, and you're in the New York area, so don't so don't I'm, spoil it. I I'm got not DeRozan watching the driving. game. I'm just refreshing the ESPN okay, website. DeRozan fadeaway blocked. Nice play by Ananobi. I would. I mean, I would rather play the Bucks. I would rather play the Bucks. Yeah, because I, like I at least too. the Knicks try, I, yeah. and I have a respect for Knicks fans. Not that I don't have respect for Bucks fans. Um, 
that would just be a bruising series against the Knicks. But also, I mean, they, the Sixers could lose. You know, they're hosting. Right now, they're going to host Miami on Wednesday, Wednesday. night. Wednesday. Because the Flyers have a home game, which is such a funny reason for the NBA to, to change their entire schedule. Usually, the 7-8 seed plays on Tuesday, and yep. then when, the 9-10 game is on Wednesday, so that the 7-8 the seed have an extra day of uh, rest if they lose. But thanks to our Philadelphia Flyers, the entire NBA has to change their schedule. Um, it's just a bummer that the Sixers won eight games in a row, and they don't they don't get the six seed. They don't get the six seed because it, like it, it's honestly pretty outrageous that they. I was looking at the just. I know this this is not deep analysis, but I was looking at the record. The fact that they won forty seven games when Embiid missed almost yeah. nine weeks is pretty crazy. Yeah, I mean, those, the 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 losses to the Nets and the Grizzlies they suck. The, remind you, like when you lose when you're about to miss a full spot in the playoffs by one game or a tie. That that is the thing that really sticks with you of the kind of things where you're like, man, if they'd only these couple moments here and there, the the ref calls, everything. That's that is that is why like we Maxie as much as get the concussion. Yeah. I mean yeah. that is why like every every moment, every after every regular season game in November and January and whatever, you go like that's why I'm mad. <laughs> because it, it comes back to get you in times like this. All right, here we go. If Inbounds. you sound like we're 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 sort of like, I guess, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We're stalling to find out. Oh, it's fucking in overtime. Yeah. Jesus well, Christ. You're, okay. You're, I'm watching the game on my phone, so I'm okay. about. To, right, so Jalen Brunson, well, it's Caruso overtime. on him. I can tell you what's going to happen. No, I don't want to. I don't want to know. I'm watching it. <laughs> Caruso on him. Here comes up. Sets a ghost screen. No, it's Brunson ISO. Caruso all over him. What defense, man? Brunson has to take a <laughs> really right. tough shot. Oh, it rims out. That was a. I mean, a really tough shot from the corner, even to get rim, and that and it rimmed out, almost over. All right, all right. So let's let let's do start on a Sixers thing, and then we'll we'll get. If you're to listening playoffs. to this podcast like on Monday, then I'm just <laughs> this is so dumb. I'm so sorry. Yeah. All right. So, Embiid, just go back to the Magic game also, first. Also, fuck the Hawks. Just to say, well, because yeah. if the Pacers had lost this game, then the Pacers yes. would have been. Pacers were not going to lose this game. Well, oh. but the Pacers have been. You know, yeah. Halliburton has been hasn't been the same since he hurt his hamstring. The Hawks are like what an embarrassing organization, <laughs> and more revenge for the Hawks on the Sixers after what happened three years ago. So disgusting. So before we get to playoffs themselves, Trey Young said he's going to listen to diss tracks all before the game. Well, all, only diss tracks. Should have listened to old diss tracks. Only is, diss tracks. My tracks, fucking... they're about dissing. <laughs> so I'm singing to a diss beat. You listen to fucking Drake and these losers doing diss tracks. You probably I, didn't I got, listen I to do good guys. diss I, tracks I think, from the 90s. I think, I think diss tracks from, from all time are, I think, a little embarrassing. That's oh, my, no, no, no. 90s, 90s diss tracks. You guys amazing. are singing. No, they're You're not singing. singing. Oh, come on. You're singing. Whatever. Don't. It's not. It's. I don't know. I think it's all embarrassing. It makes me cringe. All of it does. Singing. They fucking killed each other in the nineties. Yes. Well, that's the dangerous part. <laughs> yeah. But the dissing at the before the killing. Yeah, right. That is, I think, embarrassing. Do you think maybe they should just break dance fight instead? Yeah, that's really what it is. Yeah. That's really. It's. Ju- it's about the same as break dance. It's cosplay fighting now, especially in the night. I get it. Well, whatever. Now, now there was the more worst. danger to it then, but like, it's still embarrassing. You guys are singing, straight up singing. To song. Dissing to song. All right. I think it's embarrassing. Okay. So to go back to the Orlando game for a second, because it it informed a little bit what happened in the Sixers game today, in that Embiid tweaks the knee by landing funny on his ankle. DeAnthony Melton plays five minutes in the first quarter, is seen icing his back, does not play another minute for the rest of the game. Nick Nurse after the game said DeAnthony Melton it was a rotation decision and he couldn't get him in there again which is one of the mm. greatest lies of the last decade mm. insane just crazy lies they try to ramp him up by not playing him which is doesn't sound uh doesn't sound you know accurate so anyway they decide to they sit both guys today now the Embiid one they say is fine he is fine he will play in the next game However, he did not look the same in the second half as he did in the first half against Orlando. He's going to play, and beat is what he is. If it's the year, we're just going to have to take our lumps with this sort of stuff. Um, I am particularly concerned about the Melton thing because I, 
I think something bad happened and they're just not telling us about it. Uh, that's, and that's why his play has gone down. Well, that's minutes? why he played five minutes on against Orlando and did not play today. I mean, yeah. they didn't play him today. So that, when you're trying being, to ramp a guy up, it doesn't seem to make sense to me. I think to that not play him. they probably thought that odds are they're playing a game on Wednesday and they wanted to give everybody a full, full bill of, it's a real, it's a real, uh, real, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Favorable mentality. Yeah. Favorable view view on, on. Yeah. Well, I just think like this was what was probably going to happen. The Bucks are without Giannis and have been falling into a, a, a never ending hole and yet might still be the two seed. And the Pacers uh, scored 157 points. Yeah, the, and the Hawks can't stop anybody. Yeah, um, the the Heat against the Raptors. You know, it was just not. It just wasn't wasn't gonna wasn't gonna work out. I think they would have had to get get lucky. And I think they were just saying, hmm. we're we're gonna make sure we're gonna make sure we we we're gonna handle business here against the bad Nets team. Stand on business, as it were. We're gonna stand on business, yep. and we will <laughs> make sure everybody's healthy going in, especially like. You know, against non-NBA players, which some of these Nets that played today pretty much are, although I do I do really like Jacob Gilliard as a, as a player. Shout out Richmond Spiders. Like, you don't want Embiid going up against, like, Nick Claxton, who's out for blood. You know, they got nothing to play for. Like, there's guys that just want to be a little bit more physical when they're trying to, like, prove something in their last game of the season. So I don't, I don't mind being cautionary. Is what Speaking I'm of injuries, per Dan Olinger, this is a quote from Nick Nurse about will Robert Covington play in the playoffs? Nick Nurse says, no, I don't think so. He hasn't made enough progress to be able to move well enough without pain, which oh, is sucks. a real bummer. Cause, that is a bummer. Yeah. The right would love to, Go ahead. Would love to get him back on a minimum, minimum type contract next year. To have him watch all the games from excellent seats on the bench as he, his knee is clearly fucked up and the coach doesn't like it. well take, take take your time <laughs> yeah take your time coming back <laughs> the rights to ricky sanchez podcast is brought to you by ll pavorsky jewelers where rights to ricky sanchez listeners go and get engaged we're gonna have video in a second of of one guy who shot and hit a half court shot to win season tickets today but another ricky listener or another it was two ricky listeners that hit half court shots to win season tickets as the other one is an ll pavorsky guy Pavorsky sent me the tweets. So a a Pavorsky, one of the 390 plus writes Ricky Sanchez listeners who have bought engagement rings from LL Pavorsky hit a half court shot tonight to win Sixers season tickets. Now, you're going to win season tickets of life if you go to LL Pavorsky for a engagement ring. If you want to get engaged, there is no other place you can go. There is no other jeweler that is going to treat you with the respect, the kindness, the patience, and the style that LL Pavorsky is going to do. The reason that he wants you to make an appointment and not just show up is so he can spend proper time with you, giving you all of the information that you need and not have to rush to somebody else who just walked in the store. That is the sort of place it is. It isn't one of those jewelers where people walk in and a salesman's right on your ass just trying to up sell you on something else and pressure you? No. Pavorsky is the opposite. He is a good man. He is the first sponsor of the Right to Ricky Sanchez podcast, and he gets loud cheers when we go on trips and we introduce him. That's who you want to buy an engagement ring from. Over 390 Right to Ricky Sanchez listeners have purchased engagement rings from LL. If you'd like to do so, make an appointment 215-627-2252. Lee at LLPavorsky.com at LL Pavorsky on Twitter. He is a supporter of our charities, Providence Animal Center and Mama T's Community Fridge. LL Pavorsky Jewelers. Mr. Half Court. So speaking of Half Court, Mike, I want you to see this. Here is a video of a gentleman about to shoot a Half Court shot for season tickets. And look what hat he is wearing. Amazing. It is a Ricky hat. Let's see it. Please contestant 112. Contestant 112, where the players dwell. He walked right up to it? No, no, no. He runs. Okay. Takes a couple of steps. Boom! Did that even bank? No. Straight in. Wow. Straight in. So we need this guy's name, Absolute too. Absolute respect. Yeah. Ricky hat backwards. Amazing. And Ricky hat backwards, knowing that they would use the reverse angle. First of yep. all, also, easier to shoot with your hat backwards, so you don't, yep. in case you in case you release, you don't want to get clip any of that hat. Yep. Ba- knowing that they would film it from behind. Now, we've come a long way 
as you remember, the final game of the season when Hinky resigned, somebody tried to do this with a Ricky shirt on with a picture of Hinky, and he was told to put the shirt inside out, was not allowed to do it. So so we've come a long way. Where We'd not rather only we, you do it naked. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll give you an update right now on Ooh, both. Caruso. Uh, wow. Fuck. Sixers it's, fun, up, or, it's fun to watch Crusoe play defense, man. Nick's up two. Nick's up yeah. 116, 114. Of course, if you're listening to this anytime but absolutely know. live, you, you know really what happened. You really do know for sure, but yeah. we don't know. Here's how time works. Yeah. We don't know. You know. Yeah. So uh, we're going to we're gonna delay a little bit. I want you to see this as well. So a huge day for Tobias Harris. Uh, Keith Pompey put out this tweet along with a video that looks like it was recorded under duress. So the tweet says, and I see Jake, you put it up there so I can read it. The tweet says, with his 13th point today, Sixers forward Tobias Harris passed Hall of Famer Spencer Haywood on the all-time NBA scoring list at number 165. Here's a congratulatory message Haywood had for Harris on passing him on the scoring list. CJ hit it. And Tobias Harris and passing me on the all-time NBA scoring list. Man, you're gonna, you just had a great career. I, I love it. <laughs> and you know, I picked you guys this year to be in the finals from the East. So congratulations before you get to the finals. But you got the championship and championships in your, in your sight. As well as the Hall of Fame jacket. <laughs> well, uh, well. Congratulations. So, so, all due respect to Spencer Haywood, I do not think Tobias is going to be a Hall of Famer. Also, Keith posting congratulations on reaching 165 on the all-time NBA scoring list. Oh man, is is man Keith is in the bag for with with Tobias Harris's dad in a way that I've never seen a, a reporter in the bag for anybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. I mean, look, good for, her. good for him. Spencer Haywood legend. Yep. Um, he's I don't like, think Tobias is going to make a hall of fame. <laughs> I don't think he's going to make an all-star <laughs> team. <laughs> uh, probably need one of those <laughs> to get there. Do doing like passing, like how, how far can we go? Can we say like Ricky Council has passed like <laughs> yeah and that, uh, no. J.R. Smith's brother Chris Smith uh, for like uh, like eight thousand four hundred six yeah. <laughs> yeah. that is uh, that is pretty deep that is deep to be counting counting the rankings but so the Knicks good for, up congrats to Bias big day the Knicks up four one eighteen one fourteen a Bulls full timeout after that why don't we just talk about this and then we'll get to the playoffs big news as it was announced yesterday per Sham Sarania, and the Sixers then made it official with a tweet, with video, with him signing the contract. The 76ers are converting two-way guard forward Ricky Council IV on a new four-year $7.4 million NBA contract. He adds $864,000 in new money this season. CEO Addy Von Gontard of Young Money APAA negotiated the deal. Council averaged 5.7 points in 9.3 minutes over 30 games. A great contract for the Sixers. Uh, the reason they waited so long, I am uh, figuring out, is that if they wait, they're able to give him more money in that they're able to pay him his entire uh, two-way contract and then whatever they're left under the luxury tax to give him this year. So that was why they waited, which we is would have been nice to know. dependent on the, the Buddy Heald incentives. It yes. Seems, it seems yes. like, of, and, which is which is not a thing that we haven't had too many incentives that we've been tracking no. over the history of this podcast. I don't think it's probably not something that Daryl loves to give out. No. Um, obviously, he didn't sign Buddy to this contract. But like the idea that Ricky Council would not have been given a full NBA contract if Buddy shot a little better from three. 40% seems, maybe. Seems pretty weird. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's the best way to run a franchise to be like, I'm kind of rooting for him to miss a little bit. Yeah. Uh, that's no good. But um, but this is awesome. Ricky yeah. Council is the man. Uh, I really, I liked, I liked him at Arkansas, but I, I was pretty low on him 
as an NBA player because he, I just thought as even as athletic as he was, I didn't believe in the outside shot, which has definitely gotten better. And I just found it hard to believe that his level of attacking and finish and like getting fouled on those kind of weird mid range drives. I, I, I didn't think that they would translate and they in limited time, obviously yep. absolutely have. And he's improved as a shooter and he's improved as a, a passer. He doesn't have as much tunnel vision anymore. Uh, just awesome. Seems like a kid that works really hard. Well liked in the locker room. This rules, man. I love this shit. Like I'm so happy for him. He was the story that, uh, that they had on Liberty ballers about how he was so pissed after the, after going undrafted that he just told his agent, like, I don't fucking care where I get signed. Just anywhere. Fuck them. Uh, I relate to that. That's awesome. Um, and the fact that he's now on a full NBA contract. And obviously, there's some some team options and stuff in there. Um, well, I, it's it's very, it's it's cool for him. I'm, I'm happy for the guy. Yeah, I believe the contract is favorable toward the Sixers. That is, that is my guess in that they have signed young players to four-year deals before that have all been very favorable toward the Sixers. And but this is real money. I mean, this yeah. is this is real, real money. And and once you get once you get the breakthrough once, then the, the odds of somebody else giving you a shot. Obviously, it's not so much money that the contract isn't. You even if they do guarantee some of it, it's not. It's for sure tradable or or a throw-in in a package as like a young player with upside. Like he's a really interesting player, man. Like guys like. Guys with that kind of body and athleticism and, and willingness to, to play off ball and, and work on defense, they don't get fouled at the rate that he gets fouled. He has a knack for it, and it is uh, very intriguing. And to see a role player like that is, is kind of unique. So I'm excited to see how he develops. I do think there's a real shot, especially if Covington's not going to play. I do think there's a real shot that he... He plays uh, some minutes. He plays some minutes in the playoffs. Depending on Melton matchup, too. And if somebody's Melton, Melton being up. hurt too. Yeah, yeah. If, Mel- if Melton is not quite right, like you know, I think Nick's going to shorten that lineup a lot. But I think there's a chance that he plays, and I'm glad that Nurse has him at his disposal to use him in the in the right spots. He was a f- obviously this is true, but it, it was pretty stark with him because I made the joke like I like him, but he's going to have to learn how to either shoot, dribble, or, or pass at some yeah. point. He did make a great pass, but whatever. But then I watched his after. The last game, I watched his college highlight tape, mm-hmm. and you would watch him, and I'd be like, "Oh, he can do all of those things." <laughs> like, I'm I'm watching him dribble past people. Blah, blah, blah. Just the difference between college and NBA is just pretty stunning. So, yeah. Knicks are up 120 to 119 with uh, 13 seconds left, and the Knicks have the ball. So, obviously, this is going to overtime. It looks like Caruso's asking for a review right now. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Why don't we talk about Miami? So the Sixers play the Heat on Wednesday night. Yeah. Uh, they are you the You wanted the plan. I do. Well, so it is pot like whatever happens here, this is a gauntlet that will be fun for me personally to go from the Heat to the Knicks or the Bucks, you know, so they would eventually have to play Boston as well. Like this is this will be if if they go through as the seven seed, this will be pretty like outrageous yeah. the, the well, amount of the teams they have to play. It would be if they beat Miami, then it's the Heat or the Bucks. Yeah. And if you win that, then it's the Heat or the Bucks probably, because um, the Magic are going to be six. Yeah. Or the Pacers are six, and the Magic are five. Correct. Because um, the Magic won the division. Oh, and you won that. You won, I that, won bet. that bet. Yeah. I congrats. Bet. Thank you. Um, I bet Orlando to win the division, and they won by a game, I think, which is very nice. Yeah. Like that very much. Um, so they're gonna have to go through everybody. They, if they lose to if they lose to Miami, then then they'll be on the opposite side of the bracket and have to face Boston right away. Which obviously we would rather not have. I would rather, I'd rather shout out MOC who wants. I'd it. rather not do it. I'd rather, I'd rather go through some other teams. I'd rather uh, punch Doc in the face. Um, yeah, I mean Boston's just so much better than everybody else, man. They they finished fourteen and a half games over. Or, <laughs> I guess after the next game, we'll, we'll, won't be a half, but like. A crazy amount of but games in front of everybody. The re- the two through eight seeds are separated by like three games. If Embiid had played his normal sixty or sixty five games, Sixers would have won fifty four or fifty five games this year. Yeah, they would have been they would have been pretty clear. A clear seed. two seed, a clear yeah. two seed for sure. So, are you worried about Joel's injury? We you touched on it a little bit. Well, depends on which spike you're talking to. Ooh. What ball off Josh Hart's knee? 
Bulls playing tough, man. They're battling. Kobe White. Uh, I, I, I Bulls think ball he, down one, 13 seconds left. Don't tell me what happens. We're yeah. on my time. You yeah, don't get sorry. to. You don't get to look. Yeah. Don't say anything. I'm sorry. It just seems it. okay. Don't say it. It just seems like I'm. I'm. We were on mic standard time. Okay. I'm actually watching the games. You're just that guy. All right. I'm I watch the. I use the eye test. Here okay. we go. All right. DeRozan, one on one, Ananobi. He's Vooch gonna, sets the screen. He's gonna miss. <laughs> Pull up. Oh, the ball comes over. Oh, it rims out. Oh, wow. Yeah. Rims out. I would have expected a pump fake and a draw of the foul. Yeah. I would have expected a pump fake and a draw of the foul, but he, he got the ball in the rim. It just kind of rimmed out. Tough the, the Rice Ricky Sanchez podcast is brought to you by Big Barker Therapeutic Dog Beds. Go to bigbarker.com slash Ricky, not only to get your Big Barker Therapeutic Dog Bed, but to get two process pup patches. And for the first time, not only do you get two process pup patches, they're different. You get a black and white process pup patch that you can iron on to your Big Barker Dog Bed, or you get the re- and you get the red, white, and blue process pup patch, which is brand new, and you get a couple of process pup stickers. Now, all of that is nice. They're nice extras. The key thing with the Big Barker dog bed is that it keeps your dog healthier. It truly does. And I know it sounds unbelievable. You think a lot about your the dog's food and taking the dog to the vet and making sure that the dog gets his, his, his or her tick, you know, stuff or whatever to make sure that the tick stuff doesn't happen and, and the heartworm and all that kind of stuff. But the bed that the dog sleeps on is something that you probably never think of in terms of health. It matters. It matters because dogs develop arthritis just like we do as we get older. And if a dog sleeps on a shitty bed, just like you do, dogs going to develop that quicker and the symptoms will be more extreme. If they sleep on a big bark or dog bed, which is engineered by experts to support your dog's joints and you can see it, when you just look at it, you can see the difference. It will stave off those symptoms. Study by PenVent showed that that actually happens. PenVent did a study on big bark or dog beds and it happens. And I say big barker, it's for dogs of any size. There is the Barker Jr., in case you have one of those tiny little dogs, all the way up to extra large, which could actually fit a human. And they come in all different colors. They come with the headrest, without the headrest, just fucking, you can get an extra liner in case your dog pees in the bed all the time, whatever it is. Big Barker dog beds, the way to keep your dog healthier and happier. Once again, bigbarker.com slash Ricky is where you go. A 10-year warranty, the foam doesn't flatten or they replace it for free. One year at-home trial, if you don't like it, they will not only give you a full refund, they will pay for the shipping. Handmade in the USA. Big Barker dog beds. <laughs> so it's the Knicks. Are you not there yet? I'm not there yet, but I oh. it's, can imagine. Yeah, it's the Knicks. The Bulls are fighting though, man. Good for them. Yeah. I mean, the Knicks deserve it. Like, fuck the Bucks, man. Fuck yeah. the Bucks. Fuck so them. Heat What first... an embarrassing display. What an embarrassing display for Doc Rivers. They, they, they kick Adrian Griffin out, who is probably a bad coach, but had a good record. With them for Doc Rivers, who absolutely shit the bed. <laughs> like, yes. To finish with a losing record the rest of the season yes. after you took over and said, This is the hardest thing anyone's ever done. Well, well you did a right. lot worse than the other guy. Yeah. Like, tangibly, provably, worse. a lot worse than the other guy. Yeah. And they, they should feel embarrassed. I hope Adrian Griffin is somewhere uh, cursing Doc Rivers' name, uh, enjoying that. Like, just. Just to, like, to bring a guy on as a consultant and then have him knife the guy in the back is so dumb. And they're and they're punished for it. I hope... Look, I've always liked this Indiana team. I really like Halliburton very much. Uh, obviously, TJ's there. A ton of guys we like on that team. I would fucking love Milwaukee to lose to Indiana in the first round. I oh. would absolutely Well, they definitely... Love now, it. remember, Indiana hates Milwaukee. They like That's a rivalry that has been happening sure. all season. I, I like a, a geographic rivalries just as much as the next guy. Yep. So the Sixers have the, have the Knicks uh, the if, they, if they beat Miami. Heat first. So, okay. Yeah, you can't overlook it. I, look, so what, they're going to have to go through the tough ones. Well, so what... It, yeah, I, Milwaukee's falling apart. I would have loved to have Milwaukee because they're falling apart. But fuck it, give me the Knicks. I'm, I'm yeah. get, getting out of WIFAN just at the right time as the war over a Knicks Sixer series would have been uh, outrageous for me, would have been catastrophic. So Sixers play the Heat Wednesday night it, at Wells Fargo Center. What are your thoughts, Mike? Sixers Heat. Um, there's oh, Eric Spolstra in a one game winner moves on 
is really difficult. Even though they lost in the same game last year. For sure. Yeah. Um, he's a really good coach. He's psychotic. Uh, the Heat are very good. Jimmy is Jimmy. I really like the Bam matchup for Embiid. He's just bigger. And Bam's not a shooting threat, really. So that certainly is helpful because Embiid hates coming out on shooters. You know, they're going to play their ass off. Haywood Highsmith in everybody's mouth <laughs> um, on defense. And, you know, they I don't think they have anybody that can really stop Maxi. I'm not, I'm, you know, you always got to be worried about Terry Rozier, who has must have the best numbers against the Sixers in his career than against anybody else. By the way, Sixers open up as a four-point favorite in a game per DraftKings Sportsbook. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I think that they should win, but I think that they have not won a... When was the last time the Sixers won a win-or-go-home game? Uh I don't know. In, in my, my mind, life? it feels like the the Vince Carter shot when yeah, he missed I, on the on the from the wing. On, well, on no, 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 no. Well, that Bulls series, the Sixers oh, yeah. Bulls series, yeah, that I, was seven I, games. I neglect that team because yep. I just like it so much. Uh, yeah, that's the answer I think. But um, so those are those are probably the last two times that they've played a winner go home. Sixers are going to beat the Heat on Wednesday. I'm not worried about it. Be quite I think that they should, but yeah. I they're going to beat the Heat. That, I whether it's whether I am actually nervous the fact that everybody is saying that the the Sixers are the team you don't want to play, or or the fact that I feel a sense of balance to this podcast to to be a little bit more measured when when you're all in, um, <laughs> they should they certainly should Miami is a, not a great offensive team, and they Bam is just not big enough to handle Embiid if he's at his at full strength, and Embiid will have almost you know six days off before the game um, since they didn't play today. So they should win. And Mac Maxie's turned a corner. Maxie's better than anybody that he'd have offensively. Like, By the way, Maxie has gotten better in the last 20 games of 100%. the season. You, you can see it in the fourth quarters. There, I think it was MOC who wrote an article at writestoricksanchez.com this week, which you can subscribe to at writestoricksanchez.com, but just something about the Maxie playoff experience this year. And like, look, let's hope it's more than... The two games, <laughs> but I do think that Maxi has taken a large leap in fourth quarters in Absolutely. when he decides to score. And how about this? If it's going to be the year, Mike, they're going to have to beat the Heat. Like we're going yeah, mean, to have to go through everybody. Yeah, they're at home. There's a they're chance that they beat the Heat and then end up facing the Heat in the conference finals if they if the Heat take down Boston, which I'm not ruling out. That'd be a fun series. I would love to watch that series. A Miami Boston first round series would be very fun. Yeah, I and think I, so. I like that it's a Kyle. I like that it's a Kyle Lowry revenge series. Like, you know that Kyle Lowry is thinking like a little. I'm he's a little Terry Rozier over me energy because they they traded uh, Lowry in the Rozier trade to to Charlotte. Charlotte lets him walk. He comes here. You know that he's a little bit like that's fucked up. So I'm excited to see what Lowry does. Hopefully, he does well. It's it's fun to have smart players to go, to on our side to go against Miami because it feels like we have not had those since well, Jimmy and, got there. And Bede, I, you know this is Joel like that other guy on the other team in Jimmy Butler. Like I know they're friends, yeah. but you have to beat him. I know I need him to like extinguish this. Yes, like situation. And, it has and, to be uh, we're we're friends, but yes. I'm gonna fucking take this. From I'm you. better than you. Like, I'm better than you. I can will this team to victory. And by the way, like, I'm sick of the whole, oh, nobody wants... Like, if the Heat the Heat were that scary, they would just, I don't know, be out of the plan. I mean, that would be my, yeah. my my position. There's no way the Heat... I know people say they're just like, wait around for this. There's no way the Heat, like, are purposely getting into the plan no. than just to beat everybody. No, like, no, you, no. you cannot allow a team that had their players healthy largely the entire year who finished behind you, beat you. Absolutely yeah. not. And Mike, here, look at here the, I miss a lot of time, but I, I, I still think they're up in, in when it, when it counts in, in, in big games, maybe not against like Charlotte or whoever, but I think in big games, they're better when heroes off the court because, because of defense. But you know, the, you're going to have to watch out for a lot of Duncan Robinson action. They're going to have to stay glued to him. I, I would just love 
<laughs> I would love to help as little as possible. If I see anybody help on a fucking add a bio like post up, I'm going to lose my mind. Like, don't do it. Don't no, let no help. do it. Play it. Play it 10 times in a row. No help. Too often just like stands and watches other guys. No help. We may as well try. No help. Is it going to work? I don't think it's going to work. It didn't work. <laughs> and I hope and I hope Miami doubles the shit out of Embiid. And I hope he gets 15 assists. Kick it out to Buddy Heald. Buddy, who had who got very hot for a, little, for a stretch there today. Into the third, I think Into it the was. third quarter, hit three in a row. That was fun. Um, Maxie's going to be ready to pull. It'd be really nice if Tobias hit a couple catches through threes. They're going to beat the Heat, man. They're going to beat, beat the Heat. heat. They're going to so, beat the Heat. Stay home because, I mean, who do you want to cover Jimmy? I would put Batum on Jimmy, to be yeah, honest so with I. you. Yeah. So would I. Yeah, I, I think Batum is a combination of his moves his feet well and is also has like man strength because yeah. Jimmy is strong and it's as quick as you want to be. I think you could probably put Ubre on him I every once Batum in a while Ubre and a little bit of Tobias. Yeah, but but Ubre, Jimmy's stronger than Ubre. That that's what I would worry about. Like the thing that I like for sure, but the thing that I like about Tobias on him at sometimes is then Tobias doesn't have to cover Duncan Robinson off ball or yeah. somebody else that's gonna like. When his head's turned, he's going to cut behind him. By the way, like, that's when you miss you miss Melton a little bit too. By the way, like, yeah, just, I do think I think Melton's going to play. I think this was a precautionary thing. Whether he's ramped up enough to play more than like 10, 15 minutes is one thing. But like he's he is a, he's helpful to be out there. The first shot he took on his way back was that was a corner three off an Embiid post up. Like just willing to get it up fast is is huge. They should win this game. They're going like, to win the game. Simple as that. They should win this game. It would be. Like, the fact that it's at home really puts a lot of pressure on the Sixers to win this fucking game. <laughs> yes. The the crowd, if it gets... Oh, the groaning little, and the booing. The, and groaning, the, the groaning is going to be, like, on maximum yep. capacity. The fact that it's a, well, a essentially a game seven yep. with Jimmy on the other side. Honestly, a little fearful for Tobias, <laughs> honestly. To, uh, Tobias could miss a shot. He could, like, rattle in a shot. Yeah. It could like bounce off the rim and still go in and people would be like, watch it. <laughs> Easy there. He's on. The, th the ice couldn't be thinner. Yeah. Um, I, I think this is a good, I think against this team, against this Miami team that MOC made the point is going gonna, is gonna to send crazy doubles at Embiid like crazy, like wild from, from the blind side, all that stuff. I, I, would, I think this is a Buddy Heald game. I think this is a, like, you be ready to shoot. You take eight threes in like 22 minutes. Um, would be, be really little... would be really nice. It, they gotta win this game, man. They gotta win this game. They got They can't. They can't win the last eight games of the regular season and then lose to fucking Miami at home and then go like, okay, you beat Atlanta, or Chicago, if which is obviously not a guaranteed. <laughs> go lose to Boston in five. Go play. Yeah, go play <laughs> Boston now. Yeah, that can't be it. They, no, that can't be it. So just beat the Heat and let's you know survive in advance. Do you do? Is it? Should we talk about the Knicks now, or should we wait? And are we counting I chickens? Think we should, I think it's, it's it's way counting chickens to talk about okay. the Knicks now. Way counting right. chickens. We should mention that Kelly Oubre did not no. get five games of five assists or more. Wait, uh, hey, uh, CJ, can you get the the video of Nick Nurse talking about Kelly Oubre getting five assists? It's on the Ricky feed. There's there's a Ricky feed. Very okay. notable. I think that that should count as almost a. Almost a win. But honestly, this to me just means like we know he's capable of it. And it's a little bit of a carrot for next year. Mm. When when Kelly resigns on a team friendly deal, he loves it here. He took a pay cut to stay here. I'm already doing the narrative. Um, and he becomes an assist maven next year. He's going to get it in the first five games next season, I think. Here, here we, we go. go. Here is Nick Nurse talking about Kelly Oubre. I think this was Dan Olinger who asked him about his passing. Yeah, I mean, I think it just gives us again a little bit more variety. Uh, somebody else that can that can do something um, positive um, at the rim in the paint. I liked he had a great dump off to Paul Reed for a dunk. Like like he only had two assists tonight. I know he's been having kind of some games with five. It's like to me, then he's really like <laughs> he's playing. Like he's I'm around. sorry, but, man. I mean, they're only going to is... go down. He is talking about. Our five assist thing. He's he's got to be aware of it for sure. He has and Kel, to be. And Kelly was aware of it too. Yes, he everybody's has to aware. Be. He has to be. Speaking of Kelly, once again, I will mention this is the last time. Uh, the the year 
Ricky playoff shirt. We do a playoff shirt every year. There it is. Uh, go to the link in the description of this podcast to purchase, or if you're watching live, we put it in the chat. It is from Scheib Vintage Sports. It also has the Ricky logo on the back up top right under the neck. Only available until midnight, um, sort of inspired by an Ubre tattoo on his leg. The Rights to Ricky Sanchez podcast is brought to you by Cornblow and Cornblow, the official law firm of the process. I always forget, what was your camp relationship with Cornblow? Was he a counselor when you went to the camp? He was, yeah, he was. And he was also a counselor when I believe I was a CIT. Okay. Like I was like 13 or something. And do you remember him practicing law back then? Yes, nonstop. <laughs> One of the, we, we skipped like uh, Nukem. One, yeah, one canoeing game, one time just to be like, okay, hang on. We got to learn about some personal injury law. <laughs> Corblau and Corblau is the premier personal injury the law kids firm loved it. in the in Delaware Valley. He does have a passion for this stuff. I remember the first time I talked to Corblau, the look in his eyes when he talks about this, he takes pride in the work that he does. Corblau and Corblau has been there for 40 years. His parents started the, the law firm four decades ago. And right now they are, they just kick ass. They have, they have offices all over the Delaware Valley. I think their primary office is there in Jenkintown, but you don't even have to go to any of them. He will come to you and any sort of injury, whether it's slip and fall, injured at work, car accident, medical malpractice, which they specialize in, they are going to take good care of you. It doesn't cost you anything at all just to reach out to him, whether you call 215-576-7200 or email Cornblow, K-O-R-N-B-L-A-U at Cornblow and Cornblow.com. But the most important thing is this, when you reach out, you're going to get him. And I know that sounds crazy. Of course, you're going to get him if you reach out to the law firm, but it's not really the case. Most of these law firms, the personal injury law firms you see advertise the person you see or hear that person isn't even going to take the case, isn't going to practice law in your state. They're just going to refer you to someone else. And that's not what you use this for. This is a tough thing. Personal injury lawsuits take a long time. They're very complicated. And you need somebody who is passionate about it, who's going to communicate with you, and who is going to answer the phone. And Cornblow and Cornblow is that. Once again, give them a call, 215-576-7200. Ask for Adam or email Cornblow at Cornblow and Cornblow.com. Cornblow and Cornblow, the official law firm of the process. Now, Mike, I know you don't like when I, when I nail you down on this. You keep nail saying me, baby. Let's go. You keep saying they should beat the Heat. <laughs> <laughs> they are four-point favorites. My question yeah. for you is, will they beat the Heat? Obviously, you know, you don't know. But, like, if you had, you know, guns to your head again. if You know, if we were doing a live show right now, I would have to say yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I'm trying to think of, like, I'm putting myself in the future. When I fill out, like, a March Madness bracket, I sometimes, like, try to pull myself in the future and try to, like, imagine, like, what is it? What is it going to be? Yeah. Like I'm looking at the final four. Like, who's it going to be there? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There, there's just fucking wizardry happening in Miami every year around this time. And they absolutely should fucking win. And I really want to see Miami Boston as a series. Yep. I really want to see that. Um, I I can't guarantee it. I'm happy. For, I'm happy for you to guarantee it, but I I, I have to protect myself a little bit. Every wow. every playoffs, Alyssa starts doing the like, hey, just like temper your expectations. Like let's not try to be like she's trying. She's trying to like she's guide like, me to a safer. We own more, the house now. You can't put your foot through a wall. Just with for, everybody relax. It's this all gonna all- be fine. <laughs> you know, and Bead's gonna get injured sometimes. It happens. It's okay. Um, that was a scary injury, but I was in that moment. I was like, he's fine. Even though he ran to the locker room right away, I was like, I think he's fine. I think he's well, going to come back. The way but, he, but obviously, you were right. And as we all knew, 100%. He wasn't going to play today. Yeah. Classic doesn't play the next game. Plays the rest of one game, doesn't play the next one. Yeah. Classic. Yeah. Cl- and Sixers, classic. Dude, I got I got people, when I tweeted that, I tweeted, like, be prepared for Embiid not to play on Sunday. Everybody's like, you're too negative. And I'm like, look, I'm going to be positive this time. I'm going to say he's fine. I did say, like, it did look like he walked to the locker room fine. He didn't limp to the locker room. But there was no way he was playing this game after that happened. Absolutely. So I, you asked me if I was worried about Embiid. Are you worried about Embiid? Um, I wasn't then. No, I don't think I am. I think okay. I'm good. I think on the, on the Embiid front, I think I'm good. I think he has looked pretty damn good uh, in his return, but better than maybe a little bit better than I expected. Although my expectations were, were pretty high. Um, I just it's those 
drive to the rim, get fouled type moments where he can finish finish strong through contact. Yeah. Those are the ones that I'm like, are we going to fully get that back? And in playoff environments, like, you know, that second jump, that like, you know, working through contact, they're trying to sell the fouls. It's, you know, I just, I would, <laughs> obviously a, b- a bunch of things. I just really hope he doesn't get hurt during the playoffs. I really, 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 really hope it. Yeah, I, I just feel so fucking sad for him. We didn't talk about it, but he's th- him talking about like the depression that he went through, like the amount of injuries as he's trying to take care of his body, as he's trying to like be carry this franchise through all the turmoil that they've that they've been through for the last decade. I just can't like another injury, and obviously he came back and he looks pretty fine, and and they have a shot, but like I just feel for the guy so much, and every every team probably every fan base probably feels it, but like because of how many times he has failed, a lot of which were not his fault. Some of which were. Obviously, last year I, I put a lot of it on Embiid, even though he did have the sprained knee and came back from it quick. But, like, I just want it for him so bad, dude. I really – I want it for him. I want him to be, like, healthy. I want him to have, like, the playoff run. Whether they – how far they get remains to be seen. It's going to be a tough, a tough road no matter what. I just really want it for the dude. We've been around him for so long. He's been here – He's like an incredibly unique, singular character in Philadelphia sports history. And I just want him to cement his name like on the, this guy fucking did it in the playoffs. I don't want to take it away from, I don't want that to be a thing that he gets dinged by forever. Well, I really and, want it for the guy. And this sounds, this will sound more negative than I, I mean it to be, but I want to be able to judge his playoff performance of on its own merit without any caveats you know about him getting well he he got hurt in game three he missed game four but then he came back in game five and he wasn't quite himself i just want to be able to celebrate him or criticize him based on his play and his play alone and i i do want it for him i think that of philadelphia athletes in my lifetime he is the one he is the one who i've i've wanted to succeed more than any other one you know for a number of reasons and i would love for him to happen for it to happen and it did seem like and it has seemed like he has reached another level this year and has sort of a comfort with everything around him even with how he plays and it's amazing with nick nurse coming in and them changing how he plays he seems more comfortable you know we didn't talk about it but he threw a few passes in that first the first half against Orlando that were yeah. fucking outrageous. Really nice. he's, he's really getting into that, like back to the basket, bounce pass with a cutter. Those are those are really nice passes. Well, and the one he threw to Ubre in the corner that was like a, it's like he he curved it or something, like a yeah. bowling ball. He yeah. it was he whipped it. So that felt Jokicy. Yeah, I I would like to see it as well, and I think I think we're we're gonna see it. The and they, I don't. They are, Kevin Love did get hurt today. Left, oh, wow. left the left the Heat game against the Raptors. The win. Uh, with an arm injury and and Terry Rozier and Duncan Robinson are still out with uh with no clarity per Ira Winderman. Oh uh, well then we're those two definitely gonna lose on Wednesday. Sorry, <laughs> I take it back. They're gonna play four and five. They're gonna run a one two one zone. <laughs> if any team would do it, it'd be the fucking That's heat. True. Yeah. That's true. Just to psych you out. I'm not gonna ask for playoff predictions until the this is set. So we'll if the Sixers win on Wednesday, we'll do it on Wednesday for the, the rest of the playoffs, so on and so forth. But and we won't talk about the Nick game, as you said. The it, yeah. oh, go ahead. I, if it's the year, yes, they win. God willing, it's the fucking this. year. This is the last regular season podcast that we are doing. I really want it, man. I really want it. <laughs> I really want it. I, who was I talking about this with? I absolutely, so we've had this, I sold a movie that Emma Stone is going to star in. It's crazy. It's very exciting. Congratulations. I've been holding, thank you. It, I've been, it said she was in talks. Yes, are she's you, in talks. Yes, are you giving us talks. a scoop? No, there's no scoop. I don't know. Okay. There's all these industry terms. I don't okay. know. Whatever. Okay. All right. Um, the Scoop? No scoop. No, don't aggregate me. Um, <laughs> Hashtag deadline. Hashtag listen to the Ricky. I I was because this we've known this for a little bit, and yeah. it takes a while to like um, you know, for the report to come out and all that stuff, and the PR people, blah blah blah. I don't. I'm I'm yeah. Michael Weber, the Spike Lee of the Rice Ricky Sanchez, is is producing the movie, which is great. We love him. And like the the knowing when they told me that it was going to come out on this day that. 
that the movie news is going to come out and then the Emma news and Emma and her husband, Dave, and Dave is in talks to direct it. By the way, shout out to Deadline for including the rights to Ricky Sanchez in your biographical I information. I know. Yeah. I know. My We've manager truly at, made it. My manager was like, what's the name of your podcast? And I was like, <laughs> here we go. Let's see if they do it. Let's see if they say it. And they did say it. And so I'm happy. I'm happy for, for you that that, that 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 got in there. Um, <laughs> otherwise, the movie might have been banned. Yeah. But like as we as we were sitting with this and I was like, there's too many good things happening right now. If this news breaks, but right before the Sixers playoff run, it will either propel us into be, it being the year, or it is entirely my fault that it is not. I, that's Ooh. that's the level of like guilt I'll and responsibility it. that I feel with it. Yeah. It's so that's that's the level of that I'm that's riding on this for me is that I will either take full responsibility that finally this thing gets announced and. And it's like, that's the, you know, everybody commenting on Instagram, Zoe leading the way, like it, this being the year, it's so the year, or I fucking made it about myself and the Sixers didn't like that. So it's either my fault or because of me. So that's, I'll, I'll, I'll stand in front of that moving train. I like it. I hope it's the year, man. I really do. It's I really, year. really do. It's the year. It's the year. The hard to stomach YouTube comment of the week. This comes from at quapped says what two questions who needs a quote producer for a fucking youtube podcast <laughs> two why does said producer look like an extra from that 70s show why does it be an extra yeah Le a leading role i think yeah that CJ? was that was my my two thoughts three thoughts one he got my ass good work two <laughs> great emoji usage like very on brand for lebron with the the slapping the face with like yep. the the slanted laughing emoji. Yeah, like he's laughing so hard he can't even keep his head straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the extra, like that's such an extra dig to add in there for for whatever reason. This guy doesn't yeah. know me. Yeah. I don't know. Like him. You wouldn't be allowed to talk. You talk on the podcast. You should yeah. talk on the show. Yeah, Come on, I, I can handle some lines in that show. <laughs> I believe it. Eight three three lickface is the voicemail number. Uh, do a couple of these, couple of emails, and then get out of here. Here we go. Oh, there it is again. You know what? Mike, talk about something. I mean, this is, if there's any reason why it's not the year now, I think it's because you don't know how to use the fucking machine that we've been doing this for can, can I be honest years. With you? I just wish. CJ sits there with his able hands. I wish it was can, a little bit. can make bit. a fire in the wilderness and okay. you're not letting him press the buttons. Okay, here we go. Hey guys, it's John from San Diego. Do you think that Doc Rivers is secretly happy that Giannis might be out for the playoffs? Don't you think this is like a, a built-in excuse that Doc just loves? Thank you. I, well, I think if they crazy. lose, he will he will absolutely blame that. Whether whether Giannis is out or not, I think Giannis will probably play. Yep. Um, uh, I don't know. The calf thing is wild, like because uh, just because the Achilles and it attaching to everything else. And my uh, friend Ben Thompson of Stratechery, who is not only the biggest Bucks fan I know, but a total fucking psycho, seems to think that it is bad news for Giannis as the calf has bothered him for a while, and he might not play in the playoffs at all. So I would I would be surprised. Yeah, if would, he didn't. I play. would be surprised if he didn't play. Okay. I think he's just a guy that plays. Obviously, I'm not a fucking doctor. I'm not getting in there. What if I had like inside information about Giannis's calf? That'd be so funny. Yeah, it's such a random thing for me to have. What if you were a doctor? Oh, that'd be, that'd be, that would this help a lot time. of things. Yeah, that would help a lot of things if I've been hiding that. Uh, I just think he's a guy that plays. But regardless, yes, Doc absolutely is going to use this as an excuse. He is going to use everything as an excuse. He mm -hmm. will not take any responsibility. That's not what he does. He, I would, oh, I would love if the Pacers beat him in the first round, both because. They ducked the two seed so that they could face the Pacers. Yeah. And now they get to, they lose. lose to them. And also then I don't have to have the, truly, because I am absolutely scared money, the the fear. Of losing to Doc? Of losing to Doc would, oh. would end my life. I mean, it would be over. It would be so, obviously beating him would be, feel so good. Losing to him would feel worse than beating him would feel good. Oh, I disagree. The fear of losing to Doc Rivers in a, in a playoff series one year after he left 
would absolutely give me the yips in every aspect <laughs> of life. The life yips? I'd have the life yips. You wouldn't I wouldn't be able, to, be able dinner, to handle it. Beating be him would feel satisfying. Pee. I would love it. It would feel like the end of Shawshank. Like I would be on a beach. Everything would be beautiful. Salvation, freedom, every, what a satisfying thing. But the, the culminating this era, obviously more to come, and Maxie has, has stretched the window by a lot. With a loss to the Doc Rivers Bucks when Giannis is banged up and Dame is like old as piss. Like that would be, and Papev talking his talk, that would be so brutal. You are scared money right now. A hundred percent, dude. I'm not, I'm not going to front like I'm not. I'm a hundred percent honest. I would, <laughs> the fear of losing. When I play, I hate losing more than I like winning for sure. And so, again, I can't even mention that I sometimes play. I don't even talk about, I'm not even telling a story. Playing basketball. Mike playing basketball. Oh At least you got it right. Oh, Sign me. So I just, but I, it would really, I would love for him to lose. And so we could, we could feel like, oh, what a beautiful off day treat it is for us mm -hmm. to watch Doc Rivers lose. Lose, yeah. And then we can go back to the Sixers. So, but obviously the Salvation, it would feel good, but I'm, I'm, I'm too scared of the, of the negative outcome. That is. That is what I'd be worried about. But hmm. what were we even talking about? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> this came from Rusty, writes Ricky Sanchez at gmail.com. No one likes a grammar police, but Mike thought, quote, borrowing a dog sounded bad. The definition includes the intent to give it back. The far bigger crime was Mike saying you, quote, borrow a pack of sugar. In what world are you giving back that that's pack fair. of sugar? You don't borrow a pack of sugar. Sign no, Rusty. that's fair. I think it's a fair hit. Yeah. Wow, I just like the, the idea of borrowing. Let me just use your dog for a quick sec. Yeah. Borrow to use. I guess yeah. like borrow like a straightener or like a borrow a, a jersey or something. Yeah. Makes more sense because you will give it back. But borrow dog to use it for like what gain? Feels to get a, a girl's phone number. It's like like a real yeah. rom-com shit. Still man. a little bit weird. Just, just say it's a, just, just say your dog's sitting. Is that <laughs> just, is that what the Emma Stone movie is going to be about? Oh, somebody who borrows a, a dog. We can guess it. It's so funny her. when they say like the plot details are under wraps. I'm like, under wraps from I from guess. Who? Yeah. <laughs> fucking, I don't know. I, when I wrote it, it wasn't under wraps. I was just fucking writing it. Eight three three lickface is the voicemail number. Hey guys, Tim from Tom's River. Uh, look, I'm on board. Uh, I'm, I'm all in. This has to be the year. Uh, that said, I don't know if we can let Spike exonerate himself now after all he's done, including potentially not even watching the team this year. You know, and now he's all in. So I, I just think that needs to at least be said. Here's the thing. You, you keep using this, this Charlie Brown analogy it's not going to work out for us we, we can't be charlie brown we got to be we'll be fucking peppermint patty or somebody else who doesn't even kick the football just get out just fucking laugh from the side i don't know but you can't be you can't be charlie brown anymore mike you're a playoff playoff motherfucker man you got to get on board it can't be if it can't be wait until the semis it can't be you know and be this healthy it's just got we got to get on now it's playoff time regular season's over Okay. There is no off season. There's nothing else left. We gotta be we gotta be a fucking red baron or something, but we're not gonna be doing podcasts in the dark. Not this year. Uh you know, we gotta run the table. This is the year to do it. Uh let's go. Let's go. Not this year. No podcast in the dark when CJ got me this big light. He call, so got this calling big us, ass light. Calling us both out. I have to pay for my crimes, which I don't even know what they are, I guess aside from not watching the team, which everybody got mad at me for watching the team. Yeah. And then you for being coward. I'm fine with that. Okay. I, yeah. It, it, this being, this being the same year, if this is the year that they make the run and it's the same, it's the same year that Harden started on the team with the, with Daryl Morey as a liar is, would be a real journey. I, yes. Would be a real, you had to get, you had to get, there's been so many bottoms in the history of this podcast <laughs> that it was hard to know which which was rock bottom, like which the was real rock. When bottom. was it there? Yeah, yeah. and may and maybe the it was the Ben pass. Yeah, 
This I think is an, that this is an off season topic. Hopefully, an off season topic for when we when yeah. we have when we have reached the mountaintop, or yeah. at least we'll do it from Broad Street. At least a mount a mountain, not even yeah. the top of the mountain. Oh, well, there's going to be a Broad Street parade if they beat a good team in the playoffs. Are that'd you kidding good. me? Yeah, that'd be good. And Does the, again, the Knicks count? Oh, absolutely, the Knicks count. Honestly, okay. like Miami counts. <laughs> like <laughs> this winning one game, beating Miami in three days would be the best win of this Sixers era. Like, Jesus, that's it that's was why love. I wanted the play-in. By the way, that's why I wanted Miami in the play-in. Imagine okay. that energy. You got it. So, this the, what was the, what was the thing we say to you now? How about now, Spike? How about now? How about now, Spike? All how right. So now? we'll see. We'll next podcast. We'll see what. How about now? Indeed. Uh, this came from Ben. Writes Ricky Sanchez at gmail dot com. Today I discovered the hilarious clash of the two main podcasts I listened to when it was made public that WFAN was trying to hire Stugatz from the Dan Lebitard show to replace Spike. And furthermore, for Stugatz to say Spike had him less sold on the job after talking with him, LMAO. I hope we get some more clarification on the next pod. So it is it is true that WFAN was talking to. Uh, John Wiener, a.k.a. Stu Gatz from the Dan Levitard show for my job. I think I don't think I I did anything to make him not want the job more. My only thing to him is that the job was not all fun and games, that it was a real job with a lot of emails and salespeople and meetings. And I just wanted him to know that. And I actually screenshotted my calendar and texted it to him to show him. So that was it. So he did not take the job, though, and he won't be getting the job. So God bless. So your, your other favorite podcast can remain as it is. Um, and this is, here we go. Final one, 833 Lickface. Hey guys, it's time to have a pretty uncomfortable but serious conversation about Tyrese Maxey. This guy is ascending into true stardom. He's a clear number two. Whatever we want to talk about in the off season when it comes to Paul George or any other thing, Maxey is by far the clear two. And I think people need to realize that he has another year like this past season or this current season, I should say, where let's just say he plateaus and stats are the same and game is the same. He is firmly in Devin Booker territory when we're talking about ranking ball dominant guards. Booker's first all-star appearance is when he was 23. He has identical stats to Maxi, And you can argue different teams, yada, yada, whatever, but Tyrese Maxey is in that conversation of elite combo guards, elite ball dominant guards, and it needs to be discussed. And I would love to know what you guys think. Why is that an uncomfortable conversation? It seems like one of the more comfortable conversations we've ever had. Sounds like a great comment. I'm I'm comfortable as hell. I think if Maxey, the thing about Booker is that he has had outrageous playoff games. Yeah. Outrageous playoff games. He's also bigger than than Maxi. But I think if Maxi has some outrageous playoff games, I think the the talk of him being top 15 or so, that is completely legitimate, I think. I you kind of shake it when you get to like 11 is when it starts getting squirrely, is when guys can start being all over the place and that's when I don't know, I I think he can be top 15, top 20 if he has some some outrageous playoff games. You? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think uh I don't think the, as far as the full season goes, and obviously like his efficiency went down some when it was him having to do everything without Joel. And I think it is a little bit part of why I don't think I would vote him all NBA, even with 15 positions um, that don't uh, positionless spots is because they just didn't succeed that much without Joel. And so it took his like, okay, you're not one of the 15 best players in the league. If you're like a, 37 win team if you're the best player i think um but that's not an indictment on the guy it's, he's he's grown in huge ways over this season and i think he'll be better because of it um the fact that the sixers treaded water enough although man you win one more game and they're hosting a playoff series one more game and they're hosting a playoff series those last la- late ref calls and a couple bad Bad losses, Memphis and Brooklyn, and a couple other ones. Those are those will sting, but I think Maxie's the man. He's going to get paid as much money as they can possibly give him this offseason. I hope he's here forever. Um, the fact that you know Paul George could could come here and be the like no, not allowed. Guys, great. We want to do it. Yeah, no, I not don't want to do it. It's fine. But yeah, 
I think anybody that comes here, Maxi will not take a back seat. If anything, it will be like less Joel operating, having to do so much creation, basically. Um, so, yeah. Before we go, uh, seems like some bad news re d'anthony mountain so why don't we play this clip that dan olinger the ricky's dan olinger got here's nick nurse after the game talking about whether d'anthony mountain can play in the playoffs yeah i mean listen I, we've kind of always had i've always had concern with him right i think it's a t it's a tough uh deal it's kind of the second time we've gone through holding him out trying to treat him getting him to a place where he thinks he can play he played a couple games then he went out again for a long stretch we bring him back he plays one game and he's out again. I, I just think it's it's very difficult. I mean, I think we're in the same situation. They're going to continue to treat him, try to get him better. Um, hopefully, this is a you know we're hoping for a long run here. So there's still always time, you know, and and, and as this goes to get him back and have him be a factor in this thing. But um, it is it is concerning. Yeah. So that sounds like you don't expect him to be available Wednesday, or is that? Yeah, I, I don't want to like say either way, but I would I would imagine that two things. One, he has he has a probably a bit of a journey to get there for Wednesday. Like some things got to go well, and two, he hasn't played much, right? So there's there's it's not time to be working guys back into the fold, right? Um, but as a series goes on, if we fortunate enough to get into one, and time goes on, you never know, right? Not can they get him a better microphone? Not particularly optimistic. It's not him. It's Dan. Dan's got to get closer or something. Some of them are better. They used to they used to like lay the microphones down on the oh, table. Oh, right on top. To, yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Fucking stop tweeting for two seconds, Dan, and go put your phone. Lay, lay fucking yeah. Thing. Or get a secret microphone, an actual microphone, like a real yeah. journalist or something. I'll if you know if Allinger wants a microphone so he can go stand up there right next to Nurse, we'll pay for it. Real we'll deal. It Actually, get a fucking boom. Let yeah. It, like the twenty foot extender. Yes. Shove it right in his face. Yeah. <laughs> If I have to speak good microphone shit, then so should he. Is that what the movie is about? The plot, yes. the highly guarded plot? Yeah. Is it I young? Like, under wraps. <laughs> I'll, I'll, un I'll unwrap it for you. And it's another microphone. It's another fucking wire in this goddamn setup I got here. <laughs> That's the movie. Well, we will talk to you Wednesday night. Sixers fucking heat. One more, last chance, Mike. Are they going to win? Last chance before we go. I think, I think that they will win. All right. I think they will there win. we go. I mean, to finish with the, the third best point differential in the East. is wild. With as many games as Joel missed. He played just under half a season. They're a good team. They're a balanced team. Even, even withstanding these injuries, they're a really balanced team. I want it for, I want it for him, man. I want it for B-Ball Pauls so his contract kicks in. There we go. Well, they would have to do more than win, win, win yes, Wednesday. Well, you yeah. know, we're, we're getting there. I guess first start somewhere. Yep. I want it for I want it to be the year, man. I want it to be the goddamn year. They, and there is something to be said for a little Phillies-esque, which we mentioned before, play in, wild card round type yes. of thing. Everybody else gets a little cold. Joints start to seize up a little bit. Yep. Sixers stay, stay not playing too many games, just one. Yep. But stay fresh, stay active. Brains locked in, engaged. They don't have to travel much. Again, even if they win this game, they go to New York. That's not a plane ride. That's an easy travel day. Things are things are lining up. You know, difficult opponents, but they got to do it, man. They got to do it. It's got to be the year. Got to be it. All right. We'll talk to you Wednesday night. There we go. There we go. Go take a shower, buddy. I should. Are you are you are you down with TTP? Yeah, you know Lake Face. Come on.